So following my spirit box session that I had with Jess on Boxing Day, the house activity did heighten a little bit. I won't lie, it didn't go quite as quiet as I was hoping it would. But to be fair, it has been kind of minor. Aside from, you know, the Christmas lights moving on the hangings, it has just been, you know, noises. And the noises themselves, as you saw on the 28 footage, basically start here in the spare room and then make their way downstairs. And that is, it's not a new pattern by any means. It, it seems to be the case quite often here, to be fair. Then. And I think it's because over the years, the majority of my experimenting and like communications starting here, unless there's been some activity downstairs and I'm sort of investigating that directly. If I'm starting a session, I'm generally just doing it in here in the sort of the comfort of the spare room. It's just, it seems to be the sort of central hub for it. And I think it's almost like the spirits know that, or at least the energy that they're attracted to seems to be centralized. And so I've noticed over the past month, in fact, over the past few years, to be fair, it generally starts here and then sort of spreads into the house. So following the 28th, that, that trajectory of the spirit moving from in here downstairs sort of continued. And I thought, I thought I'd sort of do a little bit of a tracking experiment, kind of like some of the ones that I did back in the day, basically using a couple of K2 meters, a couple of LED motion sensors, you know, a REM pod, just set up in various places around the house to see if I could capture that movement on something other than just audio so that I could I could capture each device going off in sequence, you know, to, to, to really validate that motion. Now, for the most part, it was a bit hit and miss, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes it'd be the K2 meter going off. Sometimes maybe just the LED motion sensor would go off. But after about two weeks of trying, I got this.
So jumping in with a little bit of an analysis then, starting with the EVP, I've got to be honest, I really couldn't make much of it. It, it definitely sounds like a male spirit talking to a female spirit, but no matter what I did, no matter how high I boosted it, denoised it, I just couldn't make out specific words. I would love to know if you guys hear something that maybe I missed. The best I can do as far as analysing it goes is maybe hazard a guess that it's Daniel talking to Jess. Again, pure speculation, but it does sound like a male and a female spirit in conversation, like like we've just captured a snippet of it, only distant and a bit, you know, muffled. Now the activity on the other hand was almost perfect for me. The actual tracking via the devices through the house was almost spot on. It caught everything in sequence except the REM pod in the kitchen. Now, what I find interesting about that is, sure, the REM pod is more of a, an interactive tool than it is a, you know, a passive, like, an alert that something's there. They have to be intentionally interacting with it. So maybe that played a part of it. But there were no other noises in the kitchen either. And what's interesting is, on previous nights, I did get REM pod activity or at least, you know, some kind of footsteps or noises. Now maybe it is just coincidence and they just didn't happen to go into the kitchen that night or, you know, like it's ju it's just the best chain of events that we've caught so far. Maybe if I'm sort of persistent and I keep trying it, eventually I'll get, you know, the full chain. But I say this because the only thing upon analysis that I can see that differs from other nights where I did get kitchen activity is the fact that the kitchen door was closed. And I already know what the comments are going to say, and I 100% agree. There is no good reason that that door being closed should make a blind bit of difference. But hear me out, because I'm going to speculate. What if the spirit that's doing the moving around, making all the noise, is actually intentionally honouring that closed door by not going through it? And I say that because in the past, if there's been a spirit around, you know, that's making a lot of noise and is sort of hell-bent on sticking around and trying to get my attention. I've always kind of said, like, that's fine to an extent, but under absolutely no circumstances do you go into the bedroom. Like, the bedroom is off-limits. That is our, our private sanctuary. Like, you are not allowed in there. And for the most part, they have honoured that. Like, it's it's so rare that I experience anything paranormal in the bedroom. Like, it's so rare the few times that I have, I've always sort of felt like it was a new spirit that's come in from like a communication session or whatever and just doesn't know the rules yet. They haven't heard me lay down the law because not long after I do does that activity sort of die off and stop. So what if in the same way, whatever spirit is making this noise now has seen that door, heard me say that about the bedroom, seen that door being closed and decided... I'm going to honour that. I'm not going to go in there because they don't want us in there. Or on the flip side, what if it's like like a new spirit, somebody who's passed away recently that just doesn't know the boundaries yet, doesn't realise that they can pretty much go wherever they want, whenever they want, regardless of what, what sort of state the door's in. I don't know. It's all speculation. I couldn't know the answers for sure without further investigation and communication to validate it all. But it's fun to speculate. So I would absolutely love to hear what you guys think. Thank you all so much for watching. 
And as always, I'll post any and all activity as and when I get it.